on this day in 1920, what appeared to be an open and shut case of common fraud involving a local jeweler's establishment took place. However, when the incident was brought before the police court in Brisbane a month later, a truly bizarre story emerged that will continue to provide both comical amusement and abject frustration across Brisbane well into the next year. On the 27th of April, 69-year-old Theodore Harold Ritchie walked into H.F. Smith's Jewelers on the corner of George and Queen Streets in Brisbane with a desire to buy himself a watch. With a reputation for stocking a wide selection of timepieces and multiple years of experience for in-house watchmaking, Ritchie was definitely in the right establishment. Approaching the jeweler's attendant, Arthur Spowers, Theodore struck up a conversation, in turn selecting a quite humble model from the many expensive examples on display. Tending a cheque signed by PJ McDermott, drawn against the Queensland National Bank to the value of £2.7 shillings, Theodore insisted the slip was good and valid to cover the watch's 12 shilling sixpence price tag, in turn accepting the difference in face value of £1.14 shilling sixpence in change, before heading back out onto the footpath with his new purchase. Unfortunately, when the time came for HF Smiths to bank his said cheque, its bona fides were found to be anything but. Truth be known, Theodore Ritchie was on a bit of a roll when it came to dodgy checks. Five days earlier, on the 23rd of April, he'd entered the premises of John Phipps Limited on the corner of Queen and Albert Streets and obtained a hat, four collars and a tie, totaling one pound, on payment of a valueless check. And within days of his watch purchase at HF Smith's, Theodore would in turn make a visit to the business of William Tyus, a bookseller hailing from Sydney, in the hunt for four expensive literary pieces. Tending yet another cheque, this time for three pounds, signed by J.E. Bourne and drawn in favour of T.H. Richards, Theodore made away with his stash of prized bound volumes and an additional five shillings in change, making up the balance of his fraudulently proffered slip. His ability to hide falling far short of his ability to forge checks and sweet talk store assistance, old Theodore was soon arrested and brought before the police court in Brisbane for his indiscretions. Paraded before the indefatigable Hugh and Archdall at the police court to plead his case, Theodore proffered up a most unexpected and bizarre defence. Pleading guilty without contest, he agreed to be dealt with summarily, provided the court took into account his very unusual malady, phantasmagoria. Described in psychological terms as a dreamlike state filled with confusing, deceptive and imaginary images that compromise an individual's ability to function rationally, Theodore claimed his ailment frequently raised its unwanted head after a healthy dose of alcohol, which he seemed regularly incapable of refusing. Openly admitting to his weakness, he begged to be sent back to the benevolent asylum at Dunwich on Stradbroke Island, from whence he'd travelled to Brisbane only two weeks previously, or alternatively, to the leper colony on Peel Island, where he was sure he'd be kept from further temptation. The prosecuting detective put forward that Theodore had endured a few jail stints in recent years and needed to be protected from himself and the decision was made to release him on a £25 bond per charge lest he return to court within 12 months and a return order to the Dunwich Asylum. Unfortunately for Theodore, his phantasmagoria seemed to be an unavoidable force. Despite his run-in with the court only six months earlier, he found himself back before Mr Archdall, the city police magistrate, on the 29th of November. On this occasion, he'd visited the premises of the McDonald Hardware Company in the hope of having a primer sent to his address in South Brisbane. When the shop attendee refused to forward the unit due to non-payment, Theodore later returned in the day to help himself to it, smuggling the stove straight through the front door. Admitting he'd been drinking at the time and being clearly in violation of his previous good behaviour bond, he was reminded how leniently his phantasmagoria had been dealt with six months previously and was sentenced to three more months imprisonment with hard labour. 
Over the subsequent months, poor old Theodore would find himself back before the court again on the 26th of May 1921 before Police Magistrate Harris. On this occasion, he was found guilty of securing a pair of trousers from the city establishment of Allen and Starks by way of a fraudulent check that subsequently bounced on banking. Sentenced to two months imprisonment with hard labour, Theodore had barely shed his prison clothes when he was back before the court and his old acquaintance police magistrate Archdall on the 12th of October. Pleading guilty to stealing a student's leather school case from inside the door of Stoughton Hawes College on Edward Street, which he then attempted to pawn, Archdall admitted the outcome would teeter between yet another jail term or a return to the Dunwich Benevolent Asylum. Whilst the easily accessible records go quiet from this stage onwards and don't record Police Magistrate Archdall's decision, it can only be hoped that Theodore returned to Stradbroke Island and finally left his phantasmagoria at the wharf.